a group, it's nasty out. Uh, it's cold. Uh, I, I think it feels like it could snow tonight. <laughs> and uh, uh, I'm glad though that uh, uh, as I looked at some of the things, it seems that uh, maybe uh, it's not going to do that, uh, hopefully. I drove home uh, on the 26th when I ordered my son's. We did Christmas a day later of December and drove home on really bad, bad roads. Uh, a normal half hour drive from where he lives took me almost two hours to get home. Wow. And people sliding everywhere. And uh, the more I thought about it, I said, now why didn't I stay on main roads? <laughs> and, uh, but uh, didn't do it. And uh, uh, sometimes uh, that's the way it is in our lives. Uh, we make choices and uh, hindsight's always 100%, isn't it? Yes. yes. And uh, we look back at them and said, oh, I wish I'd done that. Uh, I know a lot of wish I'd done that would have saved me a lot of money. <laughs> and probably for most of us. Uh, time, effort, finance, uh, if we'd known that, right? But uh, I thank God that uh, as we trust in him, even the stupid mistakes we make. I'd always say to my guys, uh, almost every term when I was teaching regular at the mission, uh, you know, fellas, we all do stupid. Yes. We all do stupid. Yes. And uh, there's uh, not any of us that uh, can say, you know, I just never made a mistake since I've been a Christian. Mm -hmm. well, we not only made mistakes, we've sinned. Amen. And uh, so uh, tonight uh, we're in our uh, last study of the chapter, but we have two more weeks to go on some things I wanted us to look at in this book of Ephesians. I think you'll be glad that we're looking at them uh, over the next two weeks. So we have two more weeks. Uh, still praying uh, uh, how God wants for me to go. I seem to be more and more leaning towards possibly the book of Romans. And as I said, we may, we may be there to the rapture. And so, uh, uh, but I, I hope by the Spirit of God, and that's how I always hope to teach, that that Holy Spirit that lives in me and lives in you communicates back and forth with yes. us here yes. and with those who are watching us tonight, yes. wherever they may be, or if the Lord tarries 10 years from now, uh, you know, these things never go away. Yeah. Uh, once they get on YouTube, you can dig back for years yes. and uh, find almost anything. And so my hope is from our little church, that maybe many hundreds from pastor, from Jim's lessons, uh, from this Wednesday night, uh, people may be saved, Amen. and uh, we'll only we'll only know about it when we get to heaven. Yes, but that's that's all right. Uh, uh, none of us are looking for credit for saved souls. Uh, I would like a well done for hopefully being a good teacher to grow other Christians who might grow other Christians, and that's my hope. Yes. Uh, always have been, uh, or at least loved, to be a, a teaching pastor mm -hmm. where uh, we can give the Word of God in depth, but simply. Uh, and, and it's not a trick. Some guys take the simple and make it extremely difficult in their preaching today. And I have tried, as you guys have noticed, we have not shied away from books that a lot of them shy away from. Mm -hmm. we, we, we've hit uh, some fairly complicated subjects, the names of God and Christ, the Holy Spirit. Uh, a lot of people, I know some pastors that have never done one verse out of the book of Daniel. Mm -hmm. uh, never done a verse out of the book of Revelation. Uh, for whatever reason, I had a close friend that uh, 
uh, till I went to his church. I don't think had ever preached, and he was there at that time uh, a long time, uh, over well, heading towards I think 30 years, and uh, had never preached out of the Book of Revelation. And so you know, uh, uh, I I love the Pauline epistles, and uh, but that's why this last year. Uh, I read through the Bible again. Uh, I make myself, besides my normal studies, read through at least every four or five years. And when I do it, God gives me some new insight. Yes. Yeah. But my preference is, uh, like when we did Colossians, before you guys got that, even though uh, I may have preached out of it and done messages and so forth, I re-scoped the whole book before it was given to you guys. And I probably spent four months every day, or most every day, uh, studying some passage out of the book of Colossians. And so uh, I think that's what you have to do to be able to present something with depth, is to be in depth yourself. And so uh, as we are tonight uh, coming to the end of the basic study of the book, I pray it's been a blessing. I pray that uh, you have grown. I pray that you may have learned some things that uh, you maybe were not aware of, such as uh, preaching for 40 minutes on one verse, uh, that uh, uh, most people say, no, you can't. and. Uh, but when God gives me a verse that I just find so loaded, I can't help but do it. Yeah. And so uh, uh, I know a, a fellow who, I think his name was Godwin, uh, who was writing the book, and it's called the Puritan, Puritan Writers, the book of Ephesians. And uh, he was only to, I don't know if it was, maybe the end of chapter 2 and he had nearly 400 pages uh, I mean the book is about this big and then somebody else finished the book uh, the other four chapters in about this much but uh, uh, he just drew in things from all over the word of God yeah and uh, I always go every once in a while and look at that when somebody says, you know, you spend a lot of time in a book. I, I just remind myself, uh, some have done it a lot more than I have. And uh, when somebody can write, you know, in a couple chapters of Ephesians, about that much. And the writing was not uh, uh, Pica 16 either. You know, those old books are written, I don't know what they're in. Uh, six or seven. Yeah, the uh, pastor says six or seven. They are tiny. I know I'm gonna need glasses when I read those. But I want you to know that it's worth, I'm just saying this, it's worth studying the word. Amen. Yeah, it's worth studying. Yes. Uh, let us bow our heads and ask God to bless us tonight. Lord, I thank you for this good group on a nasty night cold and rainy and windy and Lord I, I thank you for people who are faithful yes. I thank you for their love for the word I thank you for this church Lord that loves the word uh, I think not only does it love the word but it loves music and Lord you've given us a bunch of talented people I thank you Lord for not only have you given musical talent, but I believe every person sitting here tonight, every person that sits in church, whatever service, you have given talents for them to do. And not only have you given them talents, you have given them gifts through the Holy Spirit that uh, either amplify their talents or maybe something completely different. And I thank you for that, Lord. I thank you for the Holy Spirit who is going to be with me and with all those that believe until the day of redemption. 
And so, Lord, I thank you for this message tonight. I pray, Lord, that it may not be my words, but your words. I pray, Lord, that uh, you may be exalted, that this teaching may glorify the Father. And I thank you, Holy Spirit, for living in us and helping to guide and direct us. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that without you, there can be no salvation. For unless you woo and draw, no one can come to Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for making the word clear tonight. And we ask your blessing in that name that really is above every name. The name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. 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 All right. Uh, number 26 in our study. Now, that's not a true compilation, by the way. Because you know that we spend eight weeks on number 24. <laughs> and so you can add about eight weeks to that or seven anyway uh, that uh, we've really been studying this but uh, uh, I can remember you know we had uh, uh, 24 1 through 7 and then I was gone for a while and uh, we did a review so it was really 24 1 through 8 so uh, I, I just, uh, that armor of God is just so needed today. Yes. We are sloppy Christians. <laughs> we, we are. We have a church of, and I, I, I don't want to make people, make, of sloppy Christians in their theology, in, their, in how they look at things, and because uh, there are so many pulls today of easy believism of easy gospel, of, you know, uh, claim it, take it, and it's yours. And, you know, if that was the case, you know, every time that we really believe that, uh, I wouldn't have cancer. I wouldn't have had five bypasses, uh, you know. Uh, but, you know, you never hear me complain about it because God gives us all our road to hope. Yes. And, uh, and we, we have to walk it. And for, for most people, there's going to be some sickness in your life. There's going to be some that are fairly serious. Uh, I, I look that even with all these things, uh, Lord willing, if he doesn't come and I don't go home to be with them, uh, 80 this year uh, that that's a long life yes. and thankful to God for it yes. yeah. and so uh, my legs aren't as strong my arms aren't as strong but uh, you know I'm going to do as much as I can for Jesus Amen. and I think all of us need to do that some of you who are healthy and, and well and uh, bodies still haven't had any real uh, problems uh, figure out God wants you to serve him yes God wants you to serve him and so tonight as we look at uh, 26 uh, which is about our 33rd or 34th study uh, that uh, it may be a blessing that it may uh, just bring joy to you and that what you hear uh, it may cause your heart uh, to be drawn closer. Uh, we're going to be looking tonight, and I'm just going to read it from, from the King James. Uh, and, uh, and when I study these, I often use a number of different texts. Uh, uh, my phone has a, a, a different translation from the King James and I often will check what that says. And so uh, don't be afraid. And a matter of fact, I would encourage all of you uh, to, the, you can buy a New Testament or even whole Bibles that uh, have maybe two, three, four 
different translations. And when you open the page, you'll see King James, you may see American Standard, you may see Amplified, and, uh, uh, and sometimes, uh, you know, if you haven't gone to theological school, and even if you have, uh, that uh, when you can cross-reference across the grain there, uh, you'll find that, you know, what does that word mean? And I will tell you this for a fact, that uh, when you study in commentaries, that the hardest verses are not explained very clearly. <laughs> I don't know how many times, you know, I know all these other verses, or at least believe I know them, but I, they will spend 14 pages on something that's pretty clear. And then on a really hard text, you got a sentence. Yes. And that's even some of the best translators. The hardest ones, you know, and I said, no, sir, that's what I wanted to know. And I needed more than a, more than a, a sentence or a paragraph on it. And so uh, uh, sometimes, you know, as we study it long enough, the Spirit just gives it to us. Yeah. Yeah. He just gives it to us. Well, verse 21, but you may also know my affairs and how I do. Tychicus, a beloved brother and faithful minister in the Lord, shall make known to you all things, whom I have sent unto you for the same purpose, that you might know our affairs, and that he might comfort your hearts. Peace be to the brethren, and love with faith from God the Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be with all of them that love our Lord, Jesus Christ in sincerity, amen. Amen. Well, as we look tonight, uh, uh, we're gonna be looking at the final closing remarks here of Paul. Final greetings to the Ephesians, verses 21 through 24. And uh, we have just read that uh, uh, Paul is uh, sending Tychicus. And uh, as, uh, as we look at our first blank there, sending Tychicus, uh, this is one we read uh, in a number of things. Uh, Colossians, he's mentioned. Uh, he, uh, he is one who uh, seemed to be a, a, a real favorite uh, of Paul, that Paul would send him. And uh, Paul apparently trusted him. When you send somebody to represent you and the word, uh, there's a great big trust value in that, isn't there? Uh, uh, and when we send somebody out as a missionary from this church, uh, we, we want them to represent the same Lord Jesus Christ we represent. Yes. Yes. We want them to love the Lord like we do. We want them not to teach a different gospel, but to teach the truth. And I think that, you know, we need to hold people who we send out for different things accountable. Accountable. I think, uh, and, and again, uh, in these days where we see so many changes, uh, it seems that sometimes accountability is not where it needs to be. Uh, you know, uh, it's amazing to me that, you know, our nickname to our city is Rocket City. And when you are putting the components of a rocket together and all the double and triple contingencies that they have to override, if one fails, there's another backup and probably another backup. Uh, you know, one wrong solder, uh, one crack, 
one impurity in something, uh, we've seen some of them explode, haven't we? We've seen uh, some of our folks die. And it's, you know, a fault somewhere there, wasn't there? And so, you know, if we have to be particular in the jobs we do, I know, I know uh, that was true whether I worked in construction or, or, or worked at General Motors or if I pumped gas. Uh, you had to do certain things right. Uh, there's a certain process you went through. You didn't put the crank in backwards in the machine you were running. Uh, or otherwise, uh, some foreman is going to be awful mad at you. Uh, it's uh, one of those things where uh, Paul sent this fellow because he trusts him. And he says, I'm going to send him to you. And I think it's interesting that uh, you have some blanks in your sheet underneath that. Uh, these are some of the reasons he's sending Tychicus to them because he's a beloved brother. He's a beloved brother. Uh, and when you look at that, uh, he sent Tychicus to them because he was beloved. Uh, I think Paul had a fairly narrow group that he loved and that he would say beloved, that they, they, they were beloved to him. I think it was not a big group. You know, they say to all of us, if you have three friends that you can really count on, you have done real well in this life. And you say, oh no, I've got, you know, it's like the girl that uh, was on the internet and her mom and dad, she says, mom and dad, you only have three, four or five good friends. She said, I've got 500. Uh, well, you know, I was in a number of fairly high leadership positions in my life. And if something goes wrong, it's real interesting with friends. Yes. <laughs> it is real interesting with friends. And you will find there's maybe a handful. Really, just a handful. That, uh, but Paul called him a beloved brother. And I think there probably were few of those in Paul's thoughts and minds. And so this is a beloved brother that Paul is sending out uh, uh, to, to the Ephesian people. He's a faithful minister. What does that mean to be faithful? Well, it means to do the job, and here it's a spiritual one, that you were set to do. In other words, Paul is saying, here's a trusted member, and if he had a staff, he might say of my staff, <laughs> that I am sending you because I trust him. He's faithful to give you what I would give you. He's faithful. And I, you know, and I, I would say to all of you, you know, we all probably need to work on being faithful more. Yes. Um, once we get saved and we begin to live life and we've lived our Christian lives for a number of years, I'm not saying we become less faithful, but sometimes we just don't seem to be touched and be as faithful as we used to be. You know, we're tired, we hurt, <laughs> we're sick, uh, we have this problem or we have that problem. But, uh, you know, and, and I will uh, say this, and the reason for this is, is that my faithfulness on this direction will make what my faithfulness looks like on this direction. See, a poor vertical relationship will lead to a poor relationship yes. on this level. Yes. It will. 
often the reason we don't care enough about each other is we've lost caring some about the Lord. Yeah. Amen. That's true. Yeah. Uh, it's not that we've lost our salvation. We, we just have become lax. Uh, isn't it easy to get into a habit? Very easy. And so uh, we, we find that uh, here's one that was faithful. Paul could say, you know, I've trained him. He's walked with me. He's been beside me. He's been faithful with me. I believe he'll be faithful with you. Amen? Amen? Yeah. And so God wants us to be faithful, my friends. First and foremost, with our great God. And then on the horizontal level as well. But I really believe that when you find yourself lax to each other, it's because you become somewhat lax here. And lastly here, as the verses here of uh, 21 through 22, we now come into 22. He's sending this fella to be a comforter or an encourager. How many of you like to be encouraged once in a while? Well, I see a few of you that don't, but uh, uh, I, I know you do. Uh, an encouraging word sometimes uh, it just means a world. I've got a couple of guys that I taught 40 years ago that every once in a while will give me a call and you know it just brings joy to my heart. Yeah. They said your ministry touched our lives. Your ministry touched our lives. We don't say that enough to each other do we? Uh, to be an encouragement even to our pastor. Uh, he preaches, you know, here and uh, uh, how many times, you know, we, we say very little. Uh, or, you know, and let me say, because he's a pastor, he's not without emotions. He gets sad, he gets tired, he gets lonely. We're all the same. Yeah. Yeah. A comforter. And you know, you can say, you know, well, I didn't get trained to preach like you, Pastor. <laughs> or like my two friends up front here that have preached for some years. And uh, uh, I, I, I didn't have that. I always liked to... Uh, the story and study that I used to do that uh, the, the nickname to this lady was Camel Knees. You can guess what she was good at. Yeah. Prayer. Yeah. And when you can do nothing else, what? And you know, often we don't do that. I'm, I'm, I always think I'm a very poor prayer. I know people say, Pastor, I'm bringing you this because I know you pray. But I always think in my own heart, Lord, I should have prayed more today. I should have talked to you a few more times. I should have just come and just spent a few more minutes with you. And I'm not talking about that you got to be there hours, but just little prayers. Some of my best times are sitting in my backyard looking at the blue sky and just talking to the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Or walking along a, a stream in a forest. Or being by the ocean and hearing the waves come in. Being in the mountains and walking along a trail. I have to say in my condition now, I don't walk many trails anymore. <laughs> if it goes more than a maybe five degree slant, uh, I won't be taking it. 
But here's a fellow that was a comforter. He was an encourager. And I just believe all of you could be that. I had told you about the pastor that had this gal a few weeks ago here that uh, just was a real negative person. And every time she walked by him, she was mumbling, complaining and mumbling. And, and, uh, and pastor, the morning he went out, he, he got a twinkle in his eye and his wife said, you better not do whatever you're thinking. <laughs> and, uh, and, and he just rushed out and, uh, but he said, I, I, that lady, as I told you a few weeks ago, as she went by me, I grabbed her hand and I said, you know, ma'am, you're really looking good today. And I, I don't know when you've looked better. And her eyes got big and glassy. And and, uh, uh, and he said, after a few weeks, he did look better. <laughs> I really believe we, we can change how people feel. Yes. I think we can. I think we can. Our second is our final thoughts. And uh, verses 23 through 24. And we first of all see that in 23, that Paul talks about peace. Peace to the brothers in Christ. Uh, we know Christ said, my peace I give you. Do you know that you were an enemy to God before you were saved? And then when you got saved, you made peace with God? Yes. See, often we think it's just peace we have. But we literally made like a peace treaty between us and God. Yes. Peace, an important thing. And our world is seeing less and less of it in these last days. And eventually just billions of people are going to get killed on our planet through the tribulation. <laughs> By the middle of the tribulation, at least half of the population of the world will be gone. If we're around 8 billion, what does that say? How many? 4 billion people. That's a slew of people. But I'm glad not only do I have peace with God, but I have the peace of God. Yeah. You know, there's just something about being at peace. I can have the world and things going wrong around me, but if God's given me through Jesus Christ, through the Spirit of God, peace, I can stand it. I can stand it. Peace. One of the things that we see there. Peace. Uh, that God wants us to have between each other, in Him, and in ourselves, inside. Also in 23, we see he speaks in, in, that, in that 23rd verse about love. One of the real key momentum builders in all of our lives is to love each other. Again, what did I say? I probably won't love you any better than I love who? God. And I know that's the truth. I can't. It's because the love of God has been shed abroad in our hearts. Amen? Amen. That's right. We know that it starts with God. John 3, 16, our favorite verse in probably everybody's vocabulary and probably more people have been led to the Lord with John 3, 16 than any verse in the Bible. God first loved, didn't he? And there's no exclusion from that. God loves the one he knows will never love him. Because he loved us when we were enemies. Yeah. But he loves those that curse him. 
put his name down, put his son's name down. He loves them. And he would want them to come. He would want them to come. I think that's why it's written in the scripture, whosoever will may come. But it's also written that broad is the way. And many be there that find it, right? But narrow is the gate that leads to eternity with Christ, with God, with the Spirit. Love. We, have, we know that Paul wrote a whole chapter in 1 Corinthians 13. All in love. He starts out with the value of love. That it's the greatest value. And he has three verses there. And it's the greatest value. Then he has a number of verses where it shows the greatest virtues come through love. There's a whole list of things we ought to be doing. And then in the last part of it, we find the victory. There's a victory. There's a victory. God wants us to know that there's value, virtue, and victory in love. Amen? Amen. There is. There is. Another great juggernaut is faith. Yes. Faith. It says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Oh. I think God blesses, as I said, people who are faithful. I mentioned that with Tychicus that Paul could send him because he thought he was faithful. Amen? Yeah. Well, you know God wants to use you and he wants you to be faithful. Mm -hmm. yeah. we, we have faith. And it ought to be a growing faith. It ought to be a maturing faith. We ought to be stronger in our faith today than when we were first saved. Y'all, can we say amen to that? Amen. We ought to be. Our faith should have grown through those years. That we are more faithful now than we were. And so as you... The scriptures are riddled with verses about faith and faith that triumphs, faith that endures, faith that can be persecuted and still is faith. We know there's an entire chapter written on that, isn't there? Hebrews 11, the hall of faith. The Hall of Faith. If 13's the chapter on love, Hebrews 11 is the chapter on faith. And he gives all those people who were faithful, faithful, faithful. I pray I might be faithful. Yes, yes. Faithful. Faithful to carry on. Faithful to serve. Faithful to endure. Faithful. As I end so much of what I do and as I send out uh, uh, thoughts on the internet, often it will end with keep on keeping on. Faithful, enduring, doing the job, doing the job. And then finally, in 24, we find that 
the grace, the grace. The grace. Faith and grace and love and peace all start with God. Amen. All start with God. And if I'm one of God's children, I ought to have some of that stuff, shouldn't I? Amen. I ought to have some of that stuff. Grace is getting what I don't deserve. I don't deserve heaven. But I've been promised I'm going there. One of the great, like I said, words of scripture, grace. Grace, grace, God's grace. It is greater. It is greater than anything. Of course, the other side of the coin in that's not part of our study uh, in the verses, but I'd like to add it. Because if grace is the positive size of the coin, when I flip it to tails, it'll be mercy. It'll be mercy. And that's not getting what I do deserve to get. You and I and everyone in this room and everyone in this world deserves hell. That's what we deserve. I thank God for his mercy and grace, don't you? Yes, amen. 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 I'm thankful. I pray as we end our regular study of this book that God's spoken to you, that he's touched your heart, yes. amen. and that something will help you to serve him better. Because yeah. I think I fail if I don't encourage you to live better. I think I failed because I want to be an encourager. I want to be like Tychicus, to be one that can bring comfort and encouragement, don't you? Amen. Some people do that better than others, right? Yeah. yeah. Some people do that better than others. But I believe we've got a good church here. Amen. Amen. And that we've got people who want to do what's right mm -hmm. and want to do it through faith and grace and love and mercy and all the rest. Mm -hmm. Lord, we thank you for tonight. Yes. I thank you for the folks that are listening to us tonight, those that will listen to us in the future. Yes. Bless them, Lord. Make this a teachable moment to them as it has been for us. Lord, I pray for our church, for our pastor, for our teachers, for our youth leaders, for all who serve here, whatever it might be in. Some that keep us safe, some that keep our yard and our church looking nice, Lord, all of them need to hear well done. Yes. And Lord, if we are doing any one of the jobs, whether it's mowing the lawn, and we do it for you, we'll hear well done. Yes. And we may be surprised in heaven that some we have never heard much about may get some of the greatest accolades as they were faithful. They were faithful. Lord, keep us faithful. Keep us serving. And we thank you for this church, it, our Midway Baptist Church here in Athens, Alabama. Keep blessing us, Lord. Keep bringing people that are, that are teachable, that want to be part of of a church that wants to serve. Yes. Thank you again for all our leadership. And we'll give you thanks in Christ's name. Amen. 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 Amen.